Driving the Golden Circle and the South Coast is at least a two-day trip. Our first day was rainy and gray, and that first day was mostly our Golden Circle day. Like almost everything in Iceland, the Kerry Crater was formed by volcanic activity. It's really cool, you can walk around and then you can walk down to the lake, so we're going to show you what that looks like. The Kerry Crater consists of red volcanic rock instead of black, and the caldera is 180 feet deep and 890 feet across. Carrot is about 3,000 years old, pretty young in volcano terms. There is a staircase and you can walk all the way down to the bottom. Made it all the way to the bottom. So we are here at the geyser and it doesn't, it's not like Yellowstone where there's a timer on it where it goes off, it just kind of goes off when it wants to. So we're going to hang out here for a little while, kind of see if we can see it um, go off, but it's a cool geothermal thing here in Iceland and it's really close to the Gulf Falls waterfall, so we're going to go do that right after this. So this area is really kind of a whole geothermal place. It's actually pretty cool, but the geyser doesn't have a timer and it goes off kind of when it wants and it's really quick. So you really have to be prepared to set your camera and be ready for it. We are here at the geyser center and really there is a geyser that goes off every couple minutes but really it's a whole complex here of different kinds of geological activity including these blue pools right here but this is um, something where they said the baseline here is about 250 degrees celsius so do not touch the water do not get in the water there are parts of iceland where you can do that but definitely not here um, but this geyser will go off um, i think we've been here for 20 minutes and it's gone off twice so it's, it's something that happens pretty often here the larger geyser is dormant so it, it is very rare but you can see this medium-sized geyser that will go off every once in a while Well, Eric saw an outlook, uh, overlook. So now we're climbing up a hill. It's beautiful and all that, so I did come all this way, I guess. <laughs> the geyser complex actually has a number of geysers and has been active for around 10,000 years. Over the years, the geyser's activity has increased or decreased based on earthquakes in the area. The actual geyser is dormant, and the one you see erupt is actually called Strokur. The one thing we did not do on the Golden Circle, which we wished we had, was Thingfiller Park. I tried to plan too much for our first day when we were on no sleep, and so we decided to head back to our hotel after the first three things. Thingfiller is only 30 minutes from Reykjavik, so we decided to visit on another day, but ended up never making it back there. Just another excuse to get back to Iceland someday. So this is the bigger geyser that's extinct. This is the one that goes off on a regular basis and there's a little geyser right there. Gold Falls Falls is one of the most important things on the Golden Circle. So while you're going around, you see the geyser you see here, you go to the National Park as well. We're going to walk down and show you what it's like to get just a little bit closer to this, but I'm going to call this the Niagara of Iceland. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. The 
south coast of Iceland is full of beautiful treasures and you could spend days exploring it. We decided to spend one day driving down to Vik and back. In 1991, the US journal Islands Magazine counted this beach as one of the 10 most beautiful beaches on earth. The cliffs above the beach are home to many birds, including puffins, although we didn't see any on our trip, even though I definitely tried. So I think we came to the wrong Black Sand Beach, but there is almost nobody here. We're straight out of Vic. Who's Vic over here? And we're climbing along. It's a little inlet here, but I think we made. There's Eric. He's trying to get a little bit further. I don't know if he jumped to that rock. So I feel like we may be out of luck. to the Deer Holai Lighthouse, which was built in 1910. The lighthouse sits on a cliff overlooking the ocean and the Black Sands Beach. From there, we headed back up the south coast towards Reykjavik. Next, we stopped at a very famous plane wreck. The plane wreck is a U.S. Navy Douglas C-117D and has remained mostly intact, which is why it has become such a tourist location. The walk from the parking lot is around an hour round trip, so we opted for the shuttle since we were on a time crunch for the day. The plane was cool to see, but given the chance again, I probably wouldn't go back. <laughs> we stopped at a glacier on the way, but didn't spend much time walking out to it, but it was still worth seeing. After that, we stopped at two waterfalls, both unique in their own way. You can walk behind both waterfalls and there's food and gifts to purchase at both places. We stopped for some delicious fish and chips at one of them. Our second day was pretty full, so we headed back to Reykjavik to spend the night. 